Hello, welcome to Rachel Paints Poorly. My name is Rachel and I paint poorly. I am going to be doing some random funny icebreaker questions that I found on the internet courtesy of museumhack.com. So let's get started. Just a little icebreaker and I'm also going to be coloring while I answer the questions using my kids coloring book. So yeah, and some crayons. This regular old Silly Sense Crayola. Okay. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. What was the worst haircut you ever had? The worst haircut I ever had was when I was a little kid. And my mom used to cut her hair and my hair was long and she would cut bangs for us. I specifically remember when our bangs got too long, she would, if it was nice outside, she would sit us on the back porch and we would have to sit on the railing with our backs up against this really big silver maple tree. And she would get out her scissors and she would, cut our bangs and I always hated it so much she'd have that little cool whip container of uh, cool whip container of water and that black comb and she would cut our bangs comb out our hair and just cut them and the thing is, is that my mom doesn't was never actually trained to cut hair she would just straighten them out, they're done like here, she just cut them straight across. But then the thing is, is once the hair would dry, it would be like up to here, so we would have these ridiculous just straight across blunt bangs that were too short, and I used to, I used to hate it. And it was time for my mom to cut her hair because I knew it would look just absolutely ridiculous. So that is the worst haircut I ever had. Let's see, who was your childhood actor, actress crush? Um, Christian Bale, absolutely. Christian Bale in Newsies. I watched it in, I think, junior high, junior high, eighth grade probably, so. Christian Bale in Newsies. Let's see. If you could bring back any fashion trend, what would it be? Hats. I think that we should all wear hats. And I think, it doesn't really matter what kind of hat, but I think everyone should wear a hat. And one of the reasons that is, is because it's impossible to look like a slob when you have to put on a hat because you can't just have a nice hat on your head and not do your hair up underneath it. Absolutely, you have to do your hair up underneath it. And if you've done your hair up, then you should also probably just look nice in general. So there would be no more people of Walmart or any of that nonsense because we'd all be looking spiffy with our hats and our done up hair and and we wouldn't look we wouldn't look sloppy like what was it like the I don't know the dressing down of America we wouldn't look we wouldn't look sloppy anymore and I don't mean we have to be all straight up bell epoch or any of that kind of stuff like nothing nothing too fancy but we could even do just casual going out to get ice cream on a Sunday that sort of thing I think that that would be good for us in general good for society good for all of us no more of this casual, as I'm sitting here in my 
sloppy messy bun and sloppy messy bun and hoodie and wearing sweatpants. I'm over here telling everybody we need to look nicer. We need to look more fancy. We need to look more put together. But I would put on my hat before I went out in public. Just have to take me at my word. And then another thing is, is you, you walk out wearing a hat, everybody looks at you because you're making a statement. So, but if everybody was wearing a hat, then nobody would look at you unless they were gonna be like, wow, where did you get that hat? So that's what I would bring back. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, what did you name your first car and does your current car have a name? Okay, so my first car is my current car. I bought this car when I was 19 back in 2009 and I still have it in 2020. The car is a 2007 Chevy Cobalt and I still have it. And at the time I named it Jack after Jack Kelly, who is Christian Bale's character in Newsies. And that was its name. But then after I got married, my oldest son, his name is Jack. So can't really call my car the same name as I called my son. It doesn't really fly. So now it's called the tin can because it's old and it's starting to rust out, but it gets us from point A to point B, so I'm not complaining. And it's still overall a decent little car. So that's my car. Excuse me, Kitty. What was your least favorite food as a child? Do you still hate it or do you love it now? So, confession time. I was a terribly picky eater as a child. Just absolutely atrocious. And I actually feel bad for my mom now that, you know, I'm a mom. I have three boys. And I just feel absolutely terrible just how picky I was. And the problem with being picky as a child is that you think, oh, well now, well, I did. well, now that I'm a grown up, I'm not going to be picky anymore. I'm going to eat other foods. The food that I probably hated the most that's inexplicable is spaghetti. I just, for some reason, I just hated tomato sauce, but I would eat it on pizza. So, like, kids like spaghetti, right? Kids eat spaghetti. But I just hated that red tomato sauce. I'm not sure why I hated it so much, but I did. And then when I was a grown-up, I was probably 21, 20, 20 21. I decided I was an adult now and there was no reason why I couldn't like pasta so spaghetti there was no reason why I couldn't like spaghetti so I went and I made myself a big old pot of spaghetti and I cooked up some pasta sauce and I put the pasta sauce all over the spaghetti made it look real good and it took a bite of the spaghetti with the pasta sauce. And it was so gross. Oh, I hated it. It was nasty. <laughs> and that's when I realized that, you know what? I'm an adult, and if there are certain things that I don't like eating, I'm not gonna eat them. I'm just not gonna eat them. And that's my kind of embarrassing, kind of my embarrassing story about how there were some things that I just didn't like eating as a kid and I still don't like eating now and I honestly don't know why. I don't know why I don't like it. It really doesn't make any sense. It's just one of those weird things that I don't like. That and peas. 
I think peas are just disgusting. I do not like peas at all. Will not eat peas. Don't like peas. Yeah, those are some things that I I really don't like. Let's see. If aliens landed on Earth tomorrow and offered to take you home with them, would you go? No. I would not. Next question. 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Which decade do you love the most and why? Okay, so I wasn't born in the 60s or 70s. I was born in October of 1989. So technically, I squeaked in by the hair on my chinny chin chin, and I am technically an 80s baby, but naturally, I don't remember any of it because I was a baby. I do remember some of the 90s. I remember, besides my bangs, I remember, oops, don't knock it over, kitty. I remember pastel sweaters. I had like a purple sweater and a pink sweater with like a heart sewn on the front. I had one of those. And then I remember super, I had a super bright tracksuit. It was white and in the background it had, it was white and then on the front it had bright squiggly like shapes. And I wore that every Wednesday because that was gym class day and I had to be at my athletic peak by wearing my, my track suit. I remember that about the 90s. What else? What else about the, oh, butterfly clips. Girls would do really cute things with their hair, but I didn't. I just had just long, straight, dark hair with blunt bangs. So other girls were doing cute things. I was never really into the fashion and just being stylish and stuff like that. I always looked basically the same. Didn't really matter. So I probably would have looked exactly the same in the 60s and 70s if I had lived back then. Um, what else about that? Oh, those little like tattoo chokers. I finally got one in like the ninth grade. So that would have been two. 2005 maybe? 2005? So by the time it just wasn't really cool anymore, guess who had one? Yours truly. But let's see, if I had to pick a decade to live in, no, which decade do you love the most? I probably would have to say the 90s just because I lived in the 90s and I can remember some of it but if I look back at the fashions I do love the 60s. I think 60s fashions are pretty cool. Um, oh the 80s is actually pretty funny. The 80s I remember because that's when my parents got together and they have lots of pictures of them back then and the my parents when they got married my mom's wedding gown is classic 80s with the giant puffed sleeves and the big 80s hair the 80s were wild so I suppose I do like that aspect about the 80s it's just everything is overblown bombastic I like the colors from the 60s they started putting those almost like acidic colors together. The 70s had the earth tones and I think the earth tones are kind of coming back. It's not quite so bright and poppy nowadays from what I can tell at least. The monochromatic earth tones are coming back. So I guess I don't really have an answer. As a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be a teacher in 
elementary school, I wanted to be a teacher. I figured that out when I was in, what grade was I in? Fourth grade. Uh, my teacher, one of my teachers was Mrs. Delman, and I thought she was just the coolest thing since sliced bread, and I wanted to be a teacher just like her. And then as I got a little older, I realized that if I was a teacher, I would have to, for like elementary school, I would also have to teach math, and math is probably just the worst subject for me, and I decided that was a bad idea, shouldn't teach math. So I wanted to be an English teacher, be an English teacher in high school. And that was my goal up through my second, second semester at college when I actually had to be in a class, not even as like a teacher's assistant, I was just kind of there sitting on the class. That's when I realized this wasn't for me. And that was pretty rough. Like you spend so many years of your life thinking you're gonna do something and then all of a sudden you just realize, no, I'm not gonna do that. Actually, that's not a good idea. That's not for me. And at the time I also got married and I had our son, so I dropped out of school for a little bit and there was a lot of soul searching that went on. What do I want to do? What do I want to be? And that's when I went to uh, Connor Prairie. This was in the early, probably 20, 2012, 2013, something like that. Went to Connor Prairie over in Indiana, Fishers, Indiana, right north of Indianapolis. And I just loved it. I just loved it so much. And I decided that that's of what I wanted to do. Not kind of, that is what I wanted to do. I wanted to work with living history and museums and that's how I ended up going for my art history degree and why I graduated from Case Western in 2017, bachelor's of art history and it turns out that that's a really difficult field to break into if you're not able or even willing to travel basically wherever they're hiring and work for peanuts, which I couldn't do with my little kids. Yep. So kind of put that on hold for a while and I decided that, you know what, I, I like it. I really enjoyed researching and I enjoyed writing and going through all of those books and just putting out what I, I learned for other people to enjoy. And so that's how we, that's how we got started on um, Rachel Paints Poorly. So that is my spiel. That is how this all got started. And Hopefully you enjoyed listening and will enjoy learning about art and art history and artists and watching more of my poor drawings and illustrations as we muddle through the masters together. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.